Notes to the Financial Statements, Chapter 3, The Balance Sheet. Notes to the financial statements are not required for partnerships and sole proprietorships. They may be supplied at the request of bankers or potential investors. The footnotes are required for corporations. Private corporations, those only held by a few stockholders, those not listed on public stock exchanges, will fill them out based on an SEC template provided in the annual filing, the 10-K. Public corporations are required to disclose all relevant information which could possibly influence a credit or investment decision, which basically means that they're required to disclose everything. So, the general categories of the footnotes to the financial statements. Number one, summary of significant accounting policies. Two, additional information to support summary totals or line items. Three, information about items not included in the financial statements. Four, supplementary information. And five, subsequent events. The first category. Summary of Significant Accounting Policies As we know in accounting, some choices are allowed. But, if you make a particular choice, some companies, excuse me, all companies are required to disclose those choices. Those choices include whether you use the cash or accrual method, what method you use for your inventory, LIFO, FIFO, or average cost, or some other method, um, such as lower cost of market, whether you use straight line or accumulated depreciation, and there are certain specialized in industry practices. For example, in agriculture, you book your revenue before you even sell your product, sometimes before it's even grown, because the markets are well established and the price is well established. Although sometimes in long-term construction, you also may show revenue before you actually earn it. With installment sales, you might actually delay revenue recognition until after you have earned it. We'll go over some of those later, something to look forward to. Um, our second category, explanation of line items. Some line items provide only summary totals. So only, you only get one line item for property, plant, and equipment. You want to know the cost of each item and the accumulated depreciation of each item. Be able to guess the age and the approximate condition. With long-term liabilities, you only get one line item. You don't know whether it's due in two years or 20 years. There may be notes. There may be bonds, which have different interest and principal payment um, contracts. So you want information about that. And certainly pension assets or liabilities might include several different items. So what you do is you provide a breakdown of these summary line items. Third category, items not included in the financial statements. Some items do not meet the recognition criteria, but are of interest to investors and creditors. Some examples of these Stock option compensation to officers is generally not disclosed until the options are exercised. Um, some transactions, like operating leases, do actually provide liabilities for the future, but generally are recognized as expenses as incurred or paid. Supplementary information. Sometimes the SEC requires supplementary inf information such as quarterly results, significant business segments, geographic segments, and changes in estimates such as bad debt rates and interest rates used to discount long-term liabilities. Subsequent events. Let's go through first the gain and loss recognition principle, which seems pretty unfair, but basically this is the way it is. Except in very rare circumstances, gains are never recognized until they are realized. They must have already happened. Basically the only exception to this rule is your um, trading or available for sale securities, and in fact with available for sale, 
the gain is not really a gain because it doesn't even hit the income statement. That is basically the only exception. But the rules for losses. Losses basically fall into four categories. Whether the loss is likely and also measurable, whether the loss is likely and not measurable, whether the loss is possibilities remote, but it is measurable, and whether the loss possibility is remote and not measurable. For losses that are likely and measurable, they must be booked in the period that the loss is recognized and shown as a loss on the income statement and a liability on the balance sheet. So for example, if as of the balance sheet date December 31st you have not lost a lawsuit but you know that you're going to lose it in the next 10 days and the amount can be reasonably estimated, the losses due to actions in the current year, you would have to show that as a loss for the current year and show the lawsuit amounts as a payable. Losses that are likely and not measurable or remote and measurable should be disclosed in the footnotes to the financial statements. Losses that are remote and not measurable do not need to be disclosed anywhere on the financial statements. Now let's get into examples of subsequent events and their treatments. You're involved in a lawsuit which you have not already lost. As I had said before, if it looks like you're going to lose it and the loss can be reliably estimated, book it in the current period and show it as a loss and a liability. If it looks like you are going to lose but you cannot estimate the loss, you're going to disclose it in the footnotes. Another example is a major customer is going bankrupt but has not yet gone bankrupt. You're going to disclose the fact that you've changed your estimate of bad debt.